Hello, my name is Kane Peterson, instructor at New Tech University. In this training, we want to cover audio routing and audio output as found on TriCaster systems. We'll be specifically looking at a TriCaster 410 Plus, but these same settings should apply across all the TriCaster line with some minor differences depending on the exact model of your TriCaster. We'll also be looking at this using the TriCaster Rev 7-1 software, but it should be similar in previous versions of software. Different TriCaster models have different amounts of audio routing capability. Our highest end solution, the NewTek VMC1, offers a 4x8x8 solution. Most TriCaster models offer a 4x4x4, and the TriCaster Mini 4K offers a 2x2x2. But what do these numbers mean? The first number represents the number of mixes available on the system. So a system that has a four as the first number means it has four independent audio mixes. These will be labeled as master, aux one, aux two, and aux three. The next two numbers rep represent the number of incoming channels and outgoing channels. So in this case, a four by four means it has four incoming channels in each mix and four outgoing channels from each mix. Now, how does all of this work together in a total system. So let's take a look at this example. Let's pretend we have three sources. These sources could be any kind of source, an external SDI source, NDI source, a built-in DDR player. It doesn't really matter what the source is. It's just something generating audio. We're gonna look at it strictly from a stereo standpoint. And you can see in my example here that source one has uh, two a left and a right checked, as does source two, but source three has nothing checked. So each source is sending in its left and right audio channels, and those are gonna come in as channels one and two, with one representing left and two representing right. Then, because of these check marks, it means that these signals are sent into the final mix. And so uh, these kind of all get added together and then show up in our, our final mix, which is set up in our output configuration window, which we'll take a, a look at here in just a moment. From this standpoint, source one and source two will both be heard in the final mix because they have the check marks in the, or their routing config, where source three is going to be silent because there are no check marks, so no audio is being added from this source. Now, all of this ends up in our output configuration window. And in here, we can choose which mixes we want to assign to which outputs. So on a TriCaster 410 Plus or TC1 type system, we have four mixes available. And I, in this case, have set mix one and mix three as the outputs uh, to the master audio, which is the, the current mix that's being shown on the screen here. Mix two and mix four happen to be set to other audio mixes. What this means is on a TriCaster TC1 system, these SDI and NDI outputs will receive the audio mix we have selected. There are also analog outputs as found on the back of the TriCaster. And these outputs also will receive mixes, but unlike the SDI ports, which can be dynamically adjusted, these ports are fixed and will always be locked to the mix that they are set to. The set of XLR outputs will always be the master mix, and the set of quarter inch outputs labeled as audio out two will be auxiliary one mix. Now another output that's available on the system is the headphone output. And by default, the headphones will follow the master mix. So if you don't do anything, that's what you'll hear when you plug in a cable to this output. There is also a gain adjustment on the headphone output, which only affects this output. It has no effect over any other uh, output or source on the system. Now, here's the things that make the headphone output work a little bit differently than the other outputs. And the first is how solo works with headphones. When you turn solo on on any source, it will not affect any of the audio going to the master or aux one, two, or three mixes. They are still going to work exactly as they would whether solo is on or off. What solo does affect is what goes to the headphone jack. So when you choose solo on any source, that source by itself or whatever sources have solo selected along with it will be routed to the headphone output. 
If you were to solo an aux output, then that aux would be routed to the headphones. So we will take a look at this in the, the TriCaster software in a moment, but solo really works with the headphone jack. Mute also works a little bit differently as well. Normally, when you mute a source, it will mute it everywhere. It will mute it to a mix and mute it to the headphones if that headphones happen to be listening to a output, whether that be master, which would be the default, or if you were listening to an aux output. But there is one exception to this, and that is if you happen to both solo and mute the same selection in the audio mixer, then that channel will be sent to headphones but it will still be muted on the, the output as it normally would, but it will be set to headphones and you will be able to hear it. And this is specific, specifically designed that way so that, for example, you could uh, listen to a microphone, let's say, plugged into coming into the system. You want to mute that microphone, uh, but be able to hear it at the same time, maybe to do a mic check and get the levels correct. So you want to have somebody go out there, speak into the microphone. They're, you're going to set your levels. You don't want this mic check to be going on uh, to the output of the system. Let's say this was happening during the production. So you could mute and solo simultaneously have just that microphone separate by itself on the headphone output, not going to your production. And then when you turn the mute and solo back off, that mic will be added back into the normal mix as it would be. So that is a, a single exception to how mute works when working with the microphone output. So on the back of the system, the headphone jack is this quarter inch. It is a stereo output and you could plug a cable in here. In a way, if you're not using this headphone outputs for audio monitoring of the mixer, it does give you an additional audio output by using these solo uh, buttons in the mixer to, uh, to get another mix out of the system. Finally, there's also the supplemental audio output device option. And this is a drop down that you will find on some of the outputs depending upon your TriCaster model. And this allows you to select a Windows driver model or WDM audio device as an additional output. This output is in addition to what the TriCaster would normally do. So using this does not take away the SDI, NDI, or analog outputs as normally found in the TriCaster. This gives you one additional type of output that you can use. So WDM audio devices would include things like the built-in sound card of the TriCaster or third-party sound devices like Dante Virtual Sound Card or even USB connected audio devices. By the way, if you're not aware, WDM audio devices can also be used as inputs into the TriCaster as well. So looking in the interface, you will find this in this bottom dropdown. In this case, you can see I have selected the speaker of the sound card on the TriCaster as an output, which means that on the back of the unit, uh, this port here would appear as a, uh, an additional audio output that I could use. So now let's take a look at this inside the TriCaster system. So here we are in my TriCaster 410 Plus, and I want to show you where we can find the features that we just spoke about in those PowerPoint slides. So let's start with audio routing. This is found in every single source input. So all of the inputs you can find on your system, including the DDRs and sound and effects players, will have this panel. Go to the input slider you want to configure, let's say input one in this case, click on the gear, and in the window that uh, pops up, go to the routing tab. And here in this system are my four audio mixes. Now, right now, and this will be the default for all inputs, everything is routed to every single uh, output on the system. But let's say in this case, I want the audio to go to master and I want it to go to aux one. I do not want the audio to go to aux two or aux three. Uh, all I have to do is just hit the clear buttons on here and this will remove all the audio from those channels. But if you want, you can also be selective. Maybe I just want the left and right audio of the first stereo pair to go in, but not the second uh, two sets of channels. Or maybe I found that my audio was coming in reversed. I could actually reverse audio channels by clicking it this way. Now the uh, incoming audio, which is on the right channel, um, let's say normally this would be left, can get patched 
you know, the right get patched to the proper right output channel and the left incoming channel will get patched to the left outgoing channel. So you can do things like that with it as well. So this allows you for a lot of selective granularity and how you want to select things. But typically, in most cases, you're either going to have them all on or all off, and they'll often be going through in this diagonal line like you'd see in here. But anyways, we're going to clear this out. And now if we look at our audio mixer, we can see that input one has somebody talking. Input two is just a test pattern tone. And now if we look over on all of our auxes, we can see master is a combination of the two. Aux one uh, is just the person speaking. And I can see in aux two, it looks like it's just tone because if we go and look at the aux two uh, or the input two, routing you can see i have it routed to the master and to aux 2 but not to uh one and three in here which is really giving me a, a mix of everything in master and then each of these inputs as a separate output by itself in aux 1 aux 2 and then nothing currently is routed to aux 3 that has active audio on it so hopefully that kind of shows how the routing capabilities allow me to set up different audio mixes that i might need in my production now, for the headphone jack, you can see there's a phone slider here, and uh, I can adjust that level uh, by using its own slider. And as you can see, it is matching that of the master audio output because that's what it will do by default. But if I wanted to, for example, listen to the uh, person speaking, all I have to do is come and hit solo on that channel. And now you can see the phones jack is following input one. Or if I clicked on uh, input two, now the phones jack is following input two. And just to kind of show you a little differences there, you can see as I make adjustments how master changes, but the phones jack is not changing in there. You can select multiple things for the headphone jack to follow by holding down the control key. And then you can uh, select multiple solos in here. Otherwise, just clicking uh, something by itself will turn off all other solos and only leave the solo on that you click on. And then, as I mentioned as well, if I was to solo input one, but also mute input one, you can see that, for example, on aux one, I no longer hear the audio. And it's also not appearing on master anymore as well, but the headphone jack is still playing that audio, even though it's muted, because that channel happens to be both muted and soloed simultaneously. Also, if you want to send a different aux output uh, besides master to the phones jack, just press the solo button on the aux channel you want. And now you can see, for example, phones is following aux one. So that hopefully can show you how you can use the headphone jack to either uh, use it for monitoring the audio mixer in the TriCaster and really being able to selectively choose the channels you want to hear, or by using those solo buttons, you actually can configure the headphone jack as an additional audio output out of the system. Finally, let's take a look at the supplementary audio output device. This is an option found in some of the outputs depending upon your model system. To find it, go to the gear for one of your outputs, and at the bottom of the window is the supplementary output device option. Click on this drop down and choose the appropriate output device. By picking Speakers Realtek Audio, that will choose the sound card output on my system. By default, all of the outputs will be set to none. Depending upon your model system will determine which outputs have this option. On my 410 Plus, I see it in Master Out. It's also available in the AUX 1 output, but it's not available in AUX 2, 3, or the head headphone jack connector. But different systems like TC1 do offer this setting on all of those different outputs. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to output and route audio inside your TriCaster system. I want to thank you for watching.